그렇죠? បាទមិនមានប្រកាសបន្តគេចំណាយការនេះទៅស្រីសមណាការហើយនឹងមុនមុននឹងផ្ដល់គិតការជួនទៅមេត្តវីកាលពីក្តីលោកអ៊ីស
the, the way things operated from the period of 75 to 79, uh, that you have the, the, the theoretical on paper, on documents, on the statute. And of course, that may not necessarily reflect what is actually happening on the ground at a variety of levels. And I know it's a general question, but based on your historical uh, research, can you answer that question? Uh, <clears throat> certainly, there's a gap between the ambit claim. I was unclear the context before with just the page numbers. The ambit claims are being raised by the statutes of the Communist Party, and the actual practice, insofar as I've uh, had access to this through documents and interviews, shows that there was often there were often uh, gaps between what the party said it could do and what it was able to accomplish, or rather said it had to do, always did, etc., and was able to accomplish. And then if we go on uh, and continue with your answer on the following page, page 64, uh, where you say, but of course, your question is how did it operate? As soon as you get into that operation, operations questions, you're into the whole real history of DK that's a phenomenon that's still evolving that I have no claim to any genuine, genuine authority about, but one that, that I think many people in the room have studied with care and are still coming up with new ideas. Now, in light of this answer, uh, I think if we go back to your previous answer, it would appear that because there are these gaps, not just in the practical, versus the theoretical, but also with what we know, or the, doc, or the gaps in the, in the actual evidence. Is that why you say that this is a phenomenon that's still evolving? Uh, yes, it is. All right, thank you. Uh, now, I'm going to... Uh, fast forward a little bit, a few pages. Uh, to focus, first, I'll focus you on page 79. Uh, there is a series of answers. Which actually, you have to go back to page 76, where you're asked the question about Article 3 and 6. Well, the document that was being discussed, this would be the statute, that is. And so in that context, if we just go through, and I'll give you time to read it, but I just want you to, fo to focus you on what I'm interested in, and then you can look at it, and then give us your opinion. On, on page 79, right below 13.38.45, you say, now, whether this is whether this is, act, is directly reflected in practice throughout Kampuchea during the DK period, I'm unable to answer that question. I have no idea if this was faithfully followed at every level in all through different years and districts and so on. And then further down on line 14, you say there is no way to make. I think a systematic answer to the question, and then further down, even fur further down again, this would be right below 13.39.48, you say, the ruling group is a small group of collective uh, leadership at the top, and that, and, and that the, the these run through these line of this. It's very difficult to read this. As is, but I say, as it was reflected in practice, I'm not equipped to answer. Now, so it would appear, at least from my reading of your oh, and hearing your testimony, what you're saying here is that one, you're not sufficiently uh, informed 
due to lack of evidence, lack of, uh, of, what, of uh, statements from others or primary sources, you cannot give an informed opinion concerning the practice versus the theoretical, at least with respect to the two articles, articles 3 and 6 that were referenced as part of the question. Is there a question there? I didn't hear it. And, and the professor um, pointed to the very problem that I was uh, on my feet to uh, point out. Um, we're prepared to tolerate a degree of semi-leading questions, and that's why we're not objecting all the time. We understand council needs to uh, put a proposition to the, to the witness and ask him if that proposition is true or not. And to that extent, we wouldn't object. But what is happening is that council is effectively testifying, um, giving a series of factual assertions and simply asking the expert to agree with him or not. And that technique uh, is allowed in some systems, but is not allowed in this court. Uh, well, if I may re briefly respond, I don't want to debate the point. I'm using the gentleman's words, the witness's words, and I'm trying to get the witness to clarify certain points. I'll rephrase. When you say, now whether this is directly reflected in practice throughout Kampuchea during the DK period, I'm unable to answer that question. I have no idea if this was faithfully followed at every level in all three different years uh, and districts and so on. First and foremost, do you stand by that statement that you made? Uh, yes, I do, and I, I can't imagine someone would have an idea about what went on in every district and every moment and every year of the, uh, of the regime. I was being asked to give an extremely systematic oral response to a very important and interesting question, one that I have thought about, but I wasn't uh, really prepared to write uh, pages of documented history in oral form at that point. So that's why I don't mean to have seemed uh, evasive, I don't, but the, the uh, story of the gaps between theory and practice in uh, Cambodian history at this time, uh, in the history of Cambodia at this time, rather, are uh, well documented and very interesting. Thank you. And there's no need to be defensive. I merely want you to amplify on some of these, uh, some of these questions. Uh, I can assure you, I'm hardly being aggressive with you, sir. Now, uh, from your answer, however, it, when you say uh, during every level and during, through different years, that part, it would appear that you're saying that perhaps things were evolving within that period. Is that a correct interpretation, that what might have happened in 1975, for instance, the practice might be slightly different or radically different in 76, 77, 78? Hence, because of the broad nature of the question, you could not give a pithy and cogent answer. Um, I'm sorry if I seem defensive, but it seems to be the kind of response when one asks certain questions, but I don't mean to seem defensive or aggressive or whatever, but uh, let me just say that I have said uh, repeatedly and, uh, in this court and in things I've written that there was an evolution in the behavior of the regime and, and evolution of events inside the regime. We've discussed several stages, 75 to April 76, changes in the people who were being purged, uh, the uh, uh, entrance of Vietnam as a serious actor in the scene, to put it very euphemistically. Uh, the changes of focus from one set of enemies to another. Uh, certainly, I meant that there was an evolution uh, from period to period. Thank you. And the purpose is for, for us to get clarification. Uh, and I take it that, given that answer, that would apply at all levels, uh, from bottom to top, top to bottom. The answer that you just gave us, that is. Uh, 
I have no way of saying that from at all levels. I would not assert that. I would just say there has been, there was a, there's a, been a noticed evolution. Some people probably behave the same way straight on through. I, I can't assert that all levels and make that kind of a statement. All right. Well, I'm not speaking about persons. I'm speaking also about institutions or groups or, or committees. Uh, that's what I'm speaking of as well. Uh, was it an evolving process where things change, where what might have been envisaged or, or uh, expected of uh, in 1975 took some uh, detours and radical changes perhaps uh, in 76, 77, 78, 79. I think that I, I'll rely on my previous answer. The question seems to be the same. Yes, there were. Uh, thank you. I'm pausing because we, we should pause. Uh, now if I can focus your attention on, on page uh, 92, uh, and uh, I'm going to jump into the middle of, uh, of a question. If you look at page 91, uh, you'll see that you're being asked to, uh, the question begins on line 13 of page 91, right below 14.06.40. You asked about Article 23, the task of the Central Committee, and the thrust of the question comes in the following page, on page 92, where line 3 you asked, can you give the idea as to whether or not in the real practice the implementation was the same as that was written in this article? And if there, there was a distinction between the real practice and what is written here, then please describe, that was the question posed to you, line 8, page 92, uh, you begin by saying yes, I don't think I am really equipped to answer that question. It's a good question, but it is not something I've studied in detail. Again, I would suspect that most of these rules were followed. This was not, I mean, at the organization level. I think, as the closing order has suggested in the documents, I've been just recently familiarizing myself with organizationally, the place ran in the eyes of those that were organized it, organizing it fairly well. So let's look at your answer. You begin by telling us, correct, uh, correct me if you're wrong, uh, that you're not equipped to answer the question whether in reality, in actuality, Article 23 <coughs> was implemented <coughs> as it was written in in the statute. Would that be a fair characterization of your answer? Uh, please wait, uh, Professor. Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. You then go on to qualify somewhat your answer, and this is the part, and I'm not being critical, but I just, I do need to cover this, and it's not your fault, but you say, I think, as the closing order has suggested in the documents I have just recently familiarized myself with. Let me ask you here, uh, Professor Chen, are you aware that the closing order is similar to what we would consider in the Anglo-Saxon system, one which I'm sure you're familiar with, as the indictment? Are you aware of that? And if you're not, that's fine. Again, the pause is, uh, I'd say yes, but the pause is a light, a light situation. Right. So when you say that, I think, as the closing order has suggested, 
it would appear that at least with this particular portion of your answer, you're relying on what you read in the closing order, in addition to what, what else, and we'll get to that part. But in part, you are relying on the closing order itself. Yes, to an extent. In and that then, portion, in that portion of my response. Yes, yes, and that's. Uh, thank you, and that's why I'm trying to, to, to be very careful. Uh, now, when you say, in the documents I have just recently familiarized myself with, and then you say organizationally, and so on and so forth. Well, again. And I, I apologize for if I seem to be uh, insistent or, uh, yeah, I would say the word insistent is probably the correct. Uh, in, in, in knowing what exactly do you mean by the documents just recently familiarized myself with, are these documents such as, for instance, Seven candidates for prosecution written by uh, your, uh, your friend and colleague, Heather, many years ago. Is that one of the documents that you're referring to? Or are we speaking about new primary documents, primary sources, which you were unaware of, but have recently uh, come to, uh, th that have come to your attention, perhaps the ones that were provided to you by the trial chamber? Well, both, <coughs> both, both of those. Uh, the documents provided by the trial chamber, including the closing order, gave me some of my an inkling that this might have been what happened. But if you follow toward the end of the same page, you'll see that I closed off by saying I really didn't want to deal with the question, perhaps for the very reasons you're suggesting that my documentary primary source work was not up to up to par for my own by my own standards so but yes i mean this these were conclusions i reached i think uh, from the time i stopped writing uh, books about uh, democratic cambodia until now a great deal has come to our attention about the organization of uh, power in cambodia and how that power operated and that i had to quickly refamiliarize myself with some of that material Material, uh, rather than just for things I'd written myself. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, uh, if we could go to page 95 and 96, this would be a 95.14.17.23, it's a, uh, line 25. It's just a point of clarification that I need to the answer that you gave on on page 96, because it's unclear whether uh, it says here mic microphone not activated, and so we seem to have an incomplete answer, or maybe a complete answer, and I want to give you the opportunity to, to tell us what is the answer to the question, which is, did you find any evidence concerning the separate roles of the standing committee and if there were, what were the, the responsibilities or roles? And at least what we have here is I've done primary research in. My recollection uh, is slightly different. I want to give you an opportunity to, at least for the record, tell us whether you have, in fact, done primary research in this or whether your answer was, was, uh, was different. And I know it's, it's kind of no. tough going back. The answer contains the phrase, I think, uh, as I recall my uh, testimony, I think I said I'm not really prepared to answer that because this is not a subject that I've done primary research in. So that's, that's what I prepared. All right, thank you. I, thank you. I just wanted to clarify the record itself because months from now, or maybe even years, we're going to be relying on this testimony. And we, do need to, we won't be able to contact you to give us clarification on those We appreciate that. Now, if I could focus your attention to another part of your testimony, uh, and here we're going to fast forward to page 109. This again is the 18th of July. And you were provided, uh, you were asked to, to look at a, a, a portion 
or passage from your book, Voices from S21. If you look at line 17 there, you'll see, and then your, there's a quote starting at line 25. And that would be right above 15.19.02 time wise. And it says the passage is very brief, Professor. It simply states quote, No document linking either Pol Pot or Ng Siri directly, directly with orders to eliminate people at S21 has ever been discovered, although the lines of authority linking S21 with the party center have been established beyond doubt. End of quote. That was the quote from your text. Now, if we go on to the next page, which would be page 111, right above, or right below, I should say, 15.21.40, Line 12, you say, part of the, your, it's a continuation of your answer, although there was a question between that, but still, I think it's in context, and you're going to correct me if I'm wrong. It says, I want to make a correction to that passage, however, as we know, from the Doik trial, Doik himself was not in touch with all these people. He was in touch only with Son Sen and occasionally he testified with Nun Chia. So his, his connections with these other people with the center have not been defined. And when I wrote the book, I, that, that's that's mistaken. I should have said that he, he knew about the party center. He knew that Son Sen and Nun Chia were on the party center, but it said I reported to the party center. That it said, quote, I reported to the party center is is one of his interviews or whatever, but in fact, as we learn from the testimony, he just saw one or at most two people. Now, it's, at least from this passage, it seems that having listened or read uh, Doig's testimony, you will prepare in this instance uh, to acknowledge uh, the need to correct the record from what you had written. Uh, would that be a fair way of putting it? <laughs> Again, a problem with the skipping of passages, Your Honours. Um, and it's helpful now that at least the expert has a hard copy. The correction, as I understood it on the day, in fact referred to another passage which Council has just skipped. That other passage was dealing with the reporting lines from S21 to the party centre. So that was the correction, um, and, and the Professor should not be misled into thinking that he was correcting some other part of his prior writings. Uh, oh, I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the clarification. I thought it was self-evident. The gentleman has the, uh, has the text, but that's the, that's the thrust of my question, that he got it wrong in his book about the reporting process. And now that he's heard Doig's like testimony, he's corrected himself. Is that the case, uh, Professor Chen? I think not. Uh, his connection with the party center was via Son Sen. Son Sen was on the party center, that was the connection. The correction I was with the word itself, party center, perhaps implying as a whole, he was not in touch with the party center as a whole. He was in touch with Son Sen, he was not only relying on his evidence at the court that I say so, but on hundreds of documents that are addressed from 
break directly to Son Sen. Uh, we know that these documents went up to Son Sen. We have some of Son Sen's documents that passed them on or purported alleged to pass them on to other people. So the line, let me finish, please. The line with the party center, maybe that phrasing is wrong, the line with a member of the, with a crucial member of the party center, Son Sen is often said to be number three in the, in the regime. So if they said, I was in touch with the party center, I'm sure that's what he meant. He did not mean ever that he was in touch with all of them, and uh, I, I'm absolutely certain that he never was. Well, that's the clarification I wanted, and again, there's no need to be combative, uh, Professor. Uh, I don't see the problem. It's exactly what I, I was trying to, perhaps inartfully, to clarify. So when you say party center, you're saying, at least from the evidence that you've seen, it's Son Sen who is a critical member, and that's, that's as far as you're prepared to go. But you're not willing to say that on all instances, he reported to the entire center, whatever that center may have been. Well, again, we're, we're, we're walking off into undocumented areas. We don't know what, what, what Sun Sen did with the documents that were sent to him. Uh, we don't know what he just, we don't have the discussions at uh, party meetings where these uh, documents might, might have been raised. So we don't know the fate of the documents. So I think the correct, all I meant by the correction was perhaps to just slightly modify the wording uh, connection with the party center. It's still, the, the connection with the party center is, 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 is proof. This is proof. This is a connection with Son Sen, who was a crucial member of it. I, I, I may be seeming like I'm carping or something. I don't mean to be uh, combative, but I, I find the questions just a little bit repetitive and, and trying to make me say something that different from what I said here, which I'm concurring with. For the record, let me just clarify what ແລະກາໄດ້ນິຍາຍບໍ່ລູກຍັງມາລຳລຶກຈານດອງໃຫ້ຖືឲ្យການບໍ່ປາຍມີປັນຫາຂ້ອຍມ Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, frankly, I was just wanting uh, to commend you for clarifying the point. Uh, but you seem to be rather aggressive and defensive. That's how, it, that's how it appears. Well, frankly, ຈະກໍຮັບຄັດໄວ້ລູກຄັນວ່າຄຸຊິງເດີ້ຄວິດທີ່ໄດ້ລູກກະຊວງສໍານວນນີ້ຍັງຢູ່ເຄີຍຖ
เซจีเนอเรลลีไอมีนเซอร์ทนีเดอะท็อปลีเดอร์สวอร์เวอร์เวอร์อินทรีสติดในคอนเฟชชั่นส์ออฟท็อปคาดเรตไลค์คอยท
darkness verse 21. What that office did, I had not worked on and I didn't know what it was. I came to some information uh, in the closing order about the office of 870, how this was a kind of a mailing address and so on. That was interesting. It didn't seem to be very incriminating of anybody. It was just a uh, amplification of a, a crucial office in the uh, administration of DK, but one which we didn't know much about. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, now we're going to switch over to the next day, uh, 19 July 2012. I don't know if that's, that has been provided to you. It has uh, not. Uh, 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 we do have a copy for you. And, uh, we apologize to you if, if, if the copy can... ແລະຈຳລຽງພິນິດມົນນຶງຊລາຍນຶງສໍານວນສົມຕົກເປວິລີສອມທອບ <laughs> ໃນສະໄຖກໍາໃນທີ່ດັບປະມູນຄ່າຍກັນ We'll start there. That's where the Been question begins. But uh, uh, I'll need to have you look at several other things. Page 30, if you could, uh, look at, and that's right above uh, nine, ten point zero zero point three four. And uh, you're being asked. Primarily to look at and focus on, on the year, 1966 and 67. Uh, and then there's a long question that goes on and on. And on, and on the next page, page 31, line 17, it says, could you tell us again briefly why you consider that by this stage the party tax that the leadership had decided that the party tax had to be changed. Of course, you begin by saying, I think, on page 31, then if we go to page 32, say, say I'm for, I felt I think, line 7, I think also felt and then, when you get to line 14, you say, we don't know exactly what they were doing, but obviously, what seems to be what they were doing was we were planning policies for when they, were, they would seize power rather than hiding from Sihanouk's policies or things that they had been doing before. This is a period of policy making, a period of consolidation, and a period of also they were gaining strength. Now, I want you to look at your entire question and answer, but that's the part that I wanted to focus your attention on because my question will be in relation to that. So when you, after you've looked at it, it the President has reminded us that you have appetite to look at the passage. If you've done that, please let me know, and then I can pose my next question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Please go ahead. Matt. All right, thank you. Uh, I guess my, my question would be, uh, well, we've known from your testimony that you weren't there. That's pretty obvious. 
But here you seem to be making a rather categorical uh, answer that it's obvious that this was a planning policy period as opposed to doing something else. Well, what gives you confidence that they were planning policies for the future? Because unless I'm mistaken, in that they were merely planning policies as opposed to policies of the future and how they would uh, conduct their business uh, later on. Again, it uh, uh, slight, but I think uh, potentially important mischaracterization of the words used by the expert. What he in fact said was obviously what seems to be what they were doing was planning policies. So I think the question should be asked with the, with the correct phrase. Um, not suggesting that the professor was saying that, there was a, that he obviously knew what they were doing, but rather that it seemed to him that this was the case. I appreciate the, um, the clarification, Mr. President. What confuses me and what I'm worried that might confuse members of the, of the bench is when the answer goes on, where it says, this is a period of policy making, a period of, con of consolidation, and also they are gaining strength. There it seemed to be a rather declarative statement. He's declaring that this indeed. So whereas before he says it seems, now, and that's why I'm giving the gentleman an opportunity uh, to clarify the point. Because before that I pointed out where he says I think and I felt. So, to put it, if I could rephrase the, the, the question, is it just a mere assumption on your part that this is a policy uh, planning period, among other things? Of course, to an extent, it is that. I think in, uh, going back to the things I wrote about that period in those two books, this is the period following uh, Pol Pot's secret visit to China and Vietnam, a period when he was decided to change the name of the party to the Communist Party of Kampuchea, putting it verbally, which is very important in Communist parties, on the same level as the Chinese party and ahead of the Vietnamese party, which remained the Vietnamese Workers' Party. There's a policy decision we know was made in 1967, for example. The move to Ratanakiri from the Easter, eastern zone where they'd been before, along the Vietnamese border, removed the party leadership from what must have been, sorry, close proximity to Vietnamese troops, as this was a Vietnamese uh, military base, Office 100. Uh, they were freer to act. Uh, it seems to me uh, there is a reference, I have a reference to the Indonesia events. I can't track it down. I think I have a feeling it was in one of the documents I read from, uh, from S21, not a confession, but I, I can't verify that. I know they were distressed by that. This was a, a major blow to a uh, neighboring, but basically unknown com and very major communist party, probably the most uh, severe blow, uh, military blow that any communist party suffered in this uh, in this period. Uh, if they were studying international affairs at all, they would be, have studied that this was a time for caution and also a time to hunker down and to decide on policy. Certainly, the opening of armed struggle in February 1968 there's obviously a decision made before that. That's a policy decision. Uh, these are, I mean, there are some assumptions, but I think you said something like uh, bold or complete or something. I don't think that would apply. Use neither one. I said the okay. Okay. Um, That was the phrase uh, that I used. Yeah, but I, I appreciate and I welcome the clarification, the clarification that you've given us, Dr. Chandler, on what you meant by policy in this context. Because the term policy in the court 
has many other different contexts, and I wanted to make sure that at least with respect to this particular answer, which deals with the period of 67 or 66 and 67, that that's what you meant by policy. Uh, and you gave us the, uh, these examples, and, and thank you very much. Now, if you want to I have a couple more, and I think we, we can pretty much wrap it up. Uh, this, this part of the testimony. If I could uh, get you to look at page 86, and that would be right above 13.45. And And again, I mean, I know we talked about it, it may seem repetitious, but I, I do have to cover this, and I do apologize for taxing your patience. But uh, if we look at line 21, uh, you may want to look at the, a little bit above uh, first, but I mean, I'll, I'll read what I think is necessary, and then you look at the, before and after for contextual purposes, and I'm sure we'll be talking about our colleagues. Uh, the question is brief because we're discussing here a speech attributed by you to Pol Pot. Could you tell us uh, if you have been able to conclude which body or whether it was an individual or a group of people uh, that issued the plan? And the answer is, I have to check the text, what I said at the time, it certainly wasn't a document originally, originally from Pol Pot personally, it emerged from the party leadership, I'm on page 87, I think it was a composite draft, there was, some writers have suggested that parts were written by Kim Sung Pong, but I'm not saying that. It was written by, it was collectively written, certainly collectively approved, coming out of the collective leadership. And it was, again, you never get a single signature on any DK documents, but only the leader can explain. And only the leader can define the word. So it comes out of this collective mentality of collective leadership, which must be inserted at some point in the central committee in the Pacific Commission. But we don't have that specific information. Now, in light of that answer, uh, Professor Chen, and in light of uh, some of the qualifications that you've made thus far, I would say that you have to look at the text. What gives you the confidence that this was a collectively drafted uh, uh, document, a composite of drafts that was collectively drafted, and I assume when you say collectively, you're uh, uh, talking about at very high levels, people would have chimed uh, in and, uh, and put in their respective uh, portions. Uh, and I would say that you have to look at the text. Well, <coughs> if it was, but that's that's a good question. I of course don't know that Pol Pot didn't sit down and write the whole thing himself. I think the operations of DK suggest very strongly, sorry, suggest that this is not how things operated. He did not sit down and write orders that went out unsigned. Oh, that's Pol Pot talking. That's fine. This was, he, he couldn't have put this thing together. He had certainly asked for certain expertises, obviously, or were brought together to, in different points. Uh, there's a, a, a mistake, really, in the question. I don't know who asked it. This, pro, this plan was never issued. It never was exposed. It never came out. The discussion before approving the plan by the party secretary, which, of course, is Pol Pot, not just attributed, that's him. They attributed it to him. That's the best I can do. Uh, never was released. So it was a document that emanated, if it didn't emanate from, I mean, it had to emanate from the party center. I guess that's an assumption. You're quite right. Uh, now, 
Point, uh, and I'm going to cover this in sort of an abbreviated fashion. Uh, if, we, if we fast forward to page 104, this is where the document is brought to your attention and you discuss it briefly. Uh, this is a foreign broadcast information service. It's EP slash And you have to give uh, an opinion on it. And later on, on page 106, you, uh, you say that you have doubts about, uh, about whether the document reflects reality. You can find that on lines 19 to 21, uh, page 106. And if I could paraphrase the gist of your testimony on that, I'm going to correct me if I'm wrong. You had indicated that these were, uh, this is for external usage, the, the information is going abroad, and therefore, uh, such information, because they knew that it was being listened upon, at times, uh, might have been, or would have been, uh, marred with misinformation or disinformation. I, they, they, this was the public face of uh, Democratic Kampuchea. They knew that these broadcasts were being in some, they might not have known how systematically they were being monitored, but they certainly knew that there were people overseas whom they didn't trust who were listening to these broadcasts. And do you know whether the party did that internally as well? For instance, where they would have uh, a meeting where supposedly uh, Congress or a Central Committee meeting where supposedly things were, were to be decided when in fact things might have been decided in advance and it was merely a charade. There may be no meeting had taken place at all, but merely a document generated to suggest that the Central Committee decided this, or the Standing Committee decided that. I can certainly concur with that and cite you back to the evidence of the public uh, reports on the election with 98% of the population uh, 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 participating, which is, even if the election had taken place the way they said it was, this is absurd. No electorate like that has ever happened. Oh, no, on paper, they happen on paper. Uh, thank you, uh, President Chenard. Uh, Mr. President, I have examined the I'm told by my colleagues that I have until uh, 2.35. Uh, I don't think I will need the entire time, but I will try to be as efficient as possible. Uh, to ensure that we stay within uh, the guided uh, period uh, collectively, uh, that is, uh, of two and a half days uh, that we were uh, provided. Uh, thank you, Just a question to the court, just curiosity, and Mr. Karnabas can answer this. Uh, the testimony from 2 o'clock onwards, will that also draw on the transcript? In which case, I'll take it down to my break with me. If not, I'll leave it here. Uh, I want you to enjoy your lunch, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> Chandra, I finished this portion. We won't be going back into the, uh, the transcript. And I appreciate the question, and my apologies if some of my questions uh, were some rather pointed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chandra. Merci, Monsieur le Président, pour euh, répondre euh, également à la question euh, de Monsieur Chandler, puisque elle nous concerne également. Euh, je veux l'avertir qu'il est possible que dans l'après-midi, euh, l'équipe de défense de Pieux euh, soit amenée euh, à revenir avec lui sur certains aspects euh, de ses euh, déclarations à cette barre. Donc, s'il se trouve qu'il euh, serait utile pour lui d'emporter euh, pendant le déjeuner ses documents, on peut le faire. Dans 
nâng tư vô bí cửu môn bàn bí cửu thà chìa ca phát xa rồi xâm rạp quật. Bà, ai lời này, đọc bí lưu xâm rạp môn xâm rạp hơi. Đã bí xa ngay trọng hơi, đối chân này ông nhầm rạp bà ca. Xâm rạp đã bí xa ngay trọng. Chắp bí bí này tới hồ đồ mong mùi xâm rạp nâng tí rồi xưa này. So much in your way, you may be talking to my car, some my car. I am trailer about the car, not rule, a kind of rat, a doll, net to me, no put up the rat, net to me, and say, hey, no, you can't, the lot more can glide, but I can't, the crumble top, some like any wind, you will be among, man come not, come on, we sam to me tea. So, Jay, look at the V. Thank you, Mr. President. Our clients, Nunchia, would like to follow the adjustment proceedings from this holding cell. He is suffering from headache, back pain, and has trouble concentrating. He informed us that he was suffering from low blood pressure earlier this morning. For those reasons, Nunchia would like to be committed to Spend the afternoon, his holding zone, and we have prepared the program. But on the other hand, we have to make a decision. We have to make a decision. We have to make a decision. Sau đó một lòng phiền cách chúng ta cả sau đó cả bên mùi rượu xin đi đời mùi hại miền bắc hà sọc sọc phim hay công việc gì cả việc đấy ban thanh tra thạch luôn nâng bậc cùn một ao nhiệm ra phim nơi lịch khách lẻ bằng sinh để cho room sau đó cả được to là bao chuyện chập chờn ao nhiệm ra sau đó giờ prom tam tam là xong một bao chuyện chập chờn luôn chia để bàn sau đó xong tam việc mình thì bị cả việc đấy bậc cốt xong một to từ tam đan cách chúng ta cả sau đó cả bị dùng ngay Tạm biệt và có sổ tuổi, sổ nạp dạy phê lưu quỳnh mùa rửa xìa này. Đời có lẽ bằng thích, chỗ ruộng một nông cạnh chẳng nạc cả sản nạc cả đẹp tốt, nông một tốt sản nạc cả này. Ông nhìn rẽ nằm rơi gọi cọng bởi vì cả việc đây chẳng dạy cho nôn chí bật cố lưu mọi nhìn rẽ liềm nơi bịa xong lẽ bằng thích, chỗ ruộng sản nạc cả đẹp tốt, nông một tốt sản nạc cả đời cho hạt lệ khá rực 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 nằm riêng đại trẻ cho bác vì chân chập chào nôn chí ai tạm nan cái chấm naka tạm naka pi chấm ngái pi bận tục không khêu mũi thật cầm xa tạm naka này tạm đáp địa phương này cái chấm naka tạm naka nơi rồi xin đi bộ cọp ai nội địa thì không khéo nằm luôn chuẩn chập chào nôn chi nâng khiếu sầm phong tới cảnh bận tục hàng cầm xa tạm naka này đời nơi rồi xin đi tục đời lục nôn chi nơi không bận tục đầy miền tiệp chom tục chật sạch nữa bộ cọp sọt tua tạm đáp quạt tạm nan cái chấm naka tạm naka pi chấm ngái đời lấy cọp ai Nóng luôn lúc khi dùng phón mà cần một tục sạm nạc này vinh nơi ở bàn môn mong mùi sạm sạm nơi tì xong rãi cho. Xong cao cho.